Hello, so today I'm going to do a video on one of these, and I can never pronounce this right, but Skeed mask, whatever that is, Skeids mask, whatever that is, which is Swedish for basically gas mask, protective mask, and the folk bit at the start just means like people, so same as German, like Volk, Volk, Folk, you know, all those. Um, so it's called, the individual model is called the Type 33, or TYP 33, but basically Type 33, Model 33. The out now, this one in the box isn't the same one as the actual box, so bear in mind where it says it's a size 2 there, and it was made in 1980. It isn't necessarily one from 1980, and it's a size 3, not a size 2. Now, how's the sizes there? So I believe 1 is large, 5 is like tiny, minuscule, minced. Um, so anyway, there's a very simple lid, basically just one like that. So let's have a look at the actual mask itself. So this is your mask, and I've cleaned it up a bit since I got it. And it's quite interesting because it's one of those cheapo civil defence masks that was designed for basically making one for every civilian in Sweden. But it's not actual awful quality for that. Now, with civil defence masks, you tend to get one of two things. You'll either get a nation that mass produces a really cheap mask, if you think like the British World War I masks. Some, uh, sorry, World War II masks, uh, like the civilian masks. Some nations end up making slightly higher quality ones like the VM-40 and some of the other Axis sort of civilian masks of World War II. And then you've got things like the GP-5 and all those, you know, like the Shum-62U Shum or whatever its name is, like technical name. And again, that's quite good for what it is, you know, but it's a mass-produced design. Then you get some nations which do the thing where they basically just pick a, like, in-production mask and buy a license or just buy a load of them, you know, to give to civilians. Um, and this is like, you know, one of those ones where a nation's basically come up with its own unique design that's alright in quality for a civil defence mask, so as you can see, size 3. I believe this is the Type B model from what I could see because it has the grey straps, from what I understand it's like the brown, sort of more retro looking straps is the Type 1. Sorry, not the Type 1, or like the Model 1, uh, Model A. Model B is this one with the straps that look a bit like Finnish M61 straps, and then the Model C had the dark green straps, if that's the only factor. But there's pretty much no identifying marks on the mask at all, other than the fact, as you can see there, size 3. Inside, there is a little um, thing there, but I believe that's just the manufacturer's logo, which says, I think, 73, so it was made in 1973. And it says 03 there, so I guess that's just size 3 again, unless it's made in March. So just to see, so you can see what this would be like if you're wearing it. And again, bear in mind, it's a bit fogged up over age of the plastic wearing out. Um, but it's still actually, you know, cleaned up quite well for what it is. So that's what it'd look like if you were wearing it. Obviously, you know, you wouldn't get and that nose bit is obvious. The most interesting thing to me about this is its filter. So apparently in one of these boxes, if you got one originally, you know, as it was all designed to be handed out, you'd get an instruction manual with it, and you'd get this filter sealed in foil. So when you look at the outside of this filter, you think, oh, that looks a lot like a 40mm filter, you know, or a standard sort of modern filter. It actually says Type 33C on there, so maybe this was a 33C, who knows. But when you unscrew it, you'll see that it is in fact nowhere close to being a normal filter. So you've got, the inside of the mask looks like this, let me just get a bit of dirt out of it. So you've got this massive sort of female socket there for the um, filter to screw into. Then you've got, obviously you can see where you've just got the end of the filter there. But you've actually got a big O-ring and a... Um, sort of screw pitch thread there so the entire filter screws in like that which is really bizarre having you know like a filter where that bit is bigger than the others again i can understand if it was just made for a civil defense mask but it kind of seems weird they didn't just use the 40 millimeter or 60 millimeter filter you know they came up with this own bizarre thing for this mask but it's kind of cool that a lot of the filter is contained in this bit of the mask so it does make good use of the thing um so it's a very simple design basically air comes through the filter through all those little holes then through the Tissot tube, well there's no Tissot tube, but basically the air comes through the nose cup there rather than hopefully not fogging up the lenses. Um, you know, and when obviously you breathe out, the idea is that those valves only work one way, these are quite old so they probably don't. But the idea is that you've got a basic nose cup system to stop it fogging up. Then you've got your exhale system, which is pretty simple. There we go, I've just taken a little cap off for you. You've just got your standard umbrella valve to stop, you know, air coming in. And as you can see, it's just a single valve on there. If I hold it to the light the right way, you might be able to see in there, but yeah, it's just literally a single piece of rubber. So if this wears out, the mask isn't going to make a seal. 
Then you've got a little protective cap for it with a deflector, like a lot of masks use. So that's designed to clip on like that and then blow air back in front of you. Right, so it's a five strap head harness. Very simple, but you know, it works. So what you do, pop it on obviously, then adjust the straps. Now you probably can't hear me very well because obviously this is um, pretty tight. I pre-adjusted some of the straps um, prior to this video and that, so it would get me a good fit. You can see it's actually air tight pressured. It's actually a really good field of view in this. There's a bit of it I can see about here with my fingers, where I can see the edge of it. But for the most part, this actually has a better field of view than a hell of a lot of military masks do. And again, this is like some sort of soft, flexible rubber. Um, I'm trying to think, it's kind of like one of those see-through vinyl type materials. Um, it might be a polyethylene type thing, I don't know, but it's, it's, it's pretty serviceable, I'd say. If this one was from 1973... And with a bit of cleaning up, you know, it looks this good. This is certainly aged better than, say, a French ARFA's type, you know, PVC. Um, it, it is very similar to an ARFA, actually, saying that, than, the, like, the Polish MP5, the kind of material this view piece is made out of. So, anyway, now I've got it on. Let's see if this filter from um, 50 years ago or so, if it was 73, and this is 2023, I'm doing this video. Let's see if this filter still actually blocks any sort of odours or anything. I'm not going to give it a proper test, I just want to see if I can smell anything through it. So, we've got some Febreze. Again, I know this isn't very scientific, but here we go. I can feel the dampness on my head. I can't actually smell anything coming through. So they probably didn't cheap out on filter components for this. It probably has a pretty good particulate filter and, you know, a fairly good level of, um... Yeah, I can't even smell that directly after wiping that off the lens. I'm sure my hand is going to absolutely stink when I take this mask off, but just to test this, if I put this down a second, which I could just keep it in my little pot, couldn't I? Right. So get this guy back off. Yeah, and I can certainly smell the Febreze now. And again, it's sort of made my hand smell. You can see the moisture on it if the lighting's right. So yeah, this, this mask is for what it was. Again, bear in mind, this is about 50 years old. If they went into production in the 70s. Um, again, the Type 33 has nothing to do with its age, because from what I understand, it was 1970s these went into production, and basically they probably stopped production of them in the 1990s when the Cold War ended. As the idea was, you know, similar to a lot of other Cold War civil defence masks, was just have a mask for your regular civilians. And then the military would have had the, um, at this point, was it the Skeed Mask 51 or whatever it was called? The um, one that's basically the um, USM9A1. A bit like how Finland had the M61. Their version was called the um, M51 Sweden, I believe. It was sort of a dark green colour, if I remember right, for um, an M9 copy. So they basically had that, and then they eventually went to the really good Forshida, or Forshida, however it's pronounced, you know, the, um, was it the F2, the military version? But, you know, the one that was, um, from the 1990s, I think it was just called the Skeed Mask 90, wasn't it? For, like, one name, and then the other name was, like, Forshida F2. Um, and obviously what Sweden did when these masks technically were retired, in a sense, was the a F2 A4, the one I really like, that was the one that then became the um, Swedish civilian mask, you know, so they basically just did a slightly cut-down version of their military mask for civilians. So rather than having a mass-produced, unique mask, they went for, you know, a full quality, sort of just a slightly toned-down one of the military version, which I guess is simpler if you're producing them, just making the same mask and just cutting out the drinking tube and things like that. So there you go. This is a Swedish um, Type 33, it's actually a really cool mask. I've said the filter's quite unique on it. I've very rarely seen filters like that, especially on things from, you know, the 60s onwards. Normally filters from this period are just 60 or 40 millimeter, you know, they're designed so they logistically be the same as the military's filters. But this thing has a unique filter to the mask, which is pretty cool. Again, safety of this I don't know, but as it's made in Sweden, which is, you know, a proper country, and it was made in the 70s, I doubt they were still using asbestos or anything dodgy. But unfortunately, you know, you're not going to get different filters for this because, as I said, it has this very strange, um, unique filter for the mask. Where it's literally, you know, just 
like that, and the filter is just this kind of block like that. So um, yeah, it's a cool mask. It's definitely a massive step above the one they had before this, where off the top of my head I can't rem remember the name of it. But you all know the one, the one that's very similar to the British civilian mask. It's just got two eyepieces, not one, and has a little paper clip at the back <laughs> that acts as the thing that keeps the straps together. So um, yes, um, or safety pin, which everything it was, paper clip, safety pin, that sort of thing, you know. Um, so yes, this is definitely a massive step up from that mask. Obviously, the Forshida F2A4 is a step up from this by quite a bit, but this is still a very nice mask. As I said, this is aged better than a lot of military masks, which are meant to be higher quality than this. Um, like I said, the straps aren't bad, you know, you've got your five-point head harness, six would be better. But, you know, it's your standard kind of buckle design. This isn't an uncomfortable material to have, especially if you haven't got long hair. You know, you've just got that basic kind of rubber, plasticky bit at the back that acts more of like a, you know, head harness to keep everything together. But yeah, it's overall a pretty good mask. And like I said, you keep it in a container like this. So I guess the idea was, if you had to carry it around with you, you would simply... Pick your mask in here, and interesting the fact once you've actually got it all put together, it stands up pretty well in there. Then you just have your um, lid pop down on it, like so. There we go. Doesn't stick very well anymore because of the fact. Um, I mean, I could obviously turn the mask slightly around and get it sitting a bit more flush. Could do it like that, for example. But um, yeah. There you go, and you could obviously carry this around with you if you wanted, like so. I'm just wondering if you can shorten these straps on here. I think these are basic, yeah, these are kind of like stitched ones. I mean, you could probably tie a knot around this one to shorten it if you really wanted to, like that, and keep it, wear it like that, but yeah. It's, it's, it's a pretty good design. You've got a very simple plastic container that's got a neck strap on it or a shoulder strap. And then, yeah, you could just carry this around on you and you've got your mask ready to go if you'd previously set it up. If not, all you have to do is just rip open the filter and do that. But yeah, as I said, it's not a mask in service anymore. And my particular one in there is not the same one as the label because that one's from 1980, my one's from 1973, and mine's a size 3, which is a bit smaller than this one. But yeah, turns out Sweden make a pretty okay Cold War, um, you know, civilian respirator.